What's going on, mi gente? It's Diego Montal. I'm back to talk about another Comebol Nation right before the qualifiers. Today, I'm joined by Jaime Macias from Football Infinito to talk about Ecuador. Um, how's it going, Jaime? How you doing? How are you doing, Diego? Pleasure talking to you uh, about my favorite tournament, that it's the World Cup qualifiers. Honestly, yeah, to me, this is the, the, the best qualifiers in the world. Obviously, as you can see by the table, it's, it's so crazy. Anyone can still drop out. Anyone can still go in. So... I want to talk to you a little bit about Ecuador, and obviously they've had a great campaign, but how, how would you qualify their campaign? What was good about it? What was bad? And how would you grade it? I think it's great. All the way is great. And, and I remember in South America, we had uh, two dates canceled in March last year uh, because of the pressure of the European teams. And, and um, I think that in a qualifier where you play for two years, in this case, almost a year and a half, you have peaks uh, on performance, ups and downs on performance. Uh, and thankfully for Ecuador, uh, at their lowest point of the performance, they only played two games. Like, to get to the qualifier, you need your team to perform at the peak of their level on the date of the calendar that you have more games. And, and if you remember the, the second half of 2021, South America played eight games. And in the first half, they play just two games. So I think that Ecuador had a little bit of luck on, on that terms, but then the performance was on the pitch when, when, when it needed. And uh, uh, what Gustavo Alfaro had made is it's tremendously, it's tremendous with the with this new generation. There were games where Ecuador had an average of 24 year old uh, age average on the pitch. And, and that's something that's not common and that it's uh, uh, showing us the, the, the generational change that is happening in South America. I think I think yeah, those are very those are very positive things. Obviously, uh, as you mentioned, the talent that that Ecuador has now is very young, so it's very promising for the future and what's to come. What what do you think needs to change for the next qualifiers for Ecuador? It's try to keep this generation in the in the learning curve and in, and, and 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 getting better and better. Like what, what they have done is great for a twenty four year old year old average team, but but you expect this talent to keep improving on, on their careers. And that's something that had happened in South America uh, with the previous generation. If you see, you have teams that are using uh, basically the same names that qualified them for South Africa. And we're talking South Africa 12 years ago, the case of Uruguay, the case of Chile. Uh, um, and then you get teams that needed to change drastically. Uh, and that was Peru. What happened with Peru was that this happened a year before. Like Gareca needed, what, what Alfaro have done now is what Gareca did for the Russia 2018 World Cup qualifiers. So Peru has a, a core structure that it's playing their second World Cup qualifiers and that it's performing as everybody expected. And that's why Peru is in, in, in that mix for the last spots. And uh, the, the problem is that there is something that the coaches of the national teams cannot control is what happened with their players on their clubs. Are they playing? Are they not playing? Are they playing a different position than what they were used to playing on the national team? Are they moving from one team to another? Are they being consistent? And that's uh, very difficult to, to control. And, and basically, you need to adapt to that and, and have a plan B, plan C to those players. And it's very hard because we are, we are small countries. We don't have... Uh, hundreds of players that can be in a national team roster. I, I don't think that if we need to do only 15 player roster will, will be enough. And that's, that's kind of the challenge on, on what's going to come. And, and the other thing, uh, Diego, it's, there's not much talk about, but nobody knows how the qualifiers are going to be. And, and that's kind of sad because I, I, I don't expect we in South America are going to have these 10 teams playing each other for 18 games. If we're getting the seven spot that, that the seven spots that that's a big rumor, it's not worth it playing eighteen games to qualify seven teams. No, absolutely, absolutely, you're right, and I think that's the beauty of <clears throat> excuse me of the South American qualifiers, the Commonwealth World qualifiers, is the, the fact that we all get to play home and away, and obviously, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages. The heat of, of Quito, the heat of Barranquilla, the the altitude of La Paz, all great things. For you, in that, at, during Ecuador's campaign, what was a key moment that you said, this is going well? Or, you know, this is, this, there, there's, there's a shot that we're making it to the World Cup. 
that first game in Argentina when we lost one nil. Uh, since that moment, you you can see that that team has some, had something different because um, the previous coach never managed a game. The previous coach is now at Barcelona uh, sporting director. It's jo- uh, Jordi Cruyff, Johan Cruyff's son. He was assigned on the position uh, right before the pandemic started. So he basically was the coach for the core national team during the pandemic, and, and he never got to manage the team. And then um, an opportunity for him to go back to Europe appeared, and, and he resigned less than a month be- a month before the, the qualifier started. So we got Gustavo Alfaro, basically not knowing the players, uh, never been close to Ecuador, uh, managing a team, uh, managing a game away to Argentina with uh, players that were average 24, 25 years old. And the team performed as it performed. We, we lost one nil with a penalty. Um, and, and then the team uh, performed better against Uruguay with a 4-2. Then the team beat Bolivia at La Paz and Bolivia was playing very well compared to other qualifiers. And then the 6-1 against Colombia. And that was a difficult part because even though Ecuador was performing very good, it also faced at home the worst version of Colombia and the worst version of, of, of Uruguay. And, and, and you, you start to needing to manage expectation because even though the team was performing very good, for that 6-1 defeat against Colombia, there was a, a, a very uh, a big part of that result that was Colombia's fault, not just Ecuadorian merit. Um, and then Peru came back and, and Peru beat us at, at, at Quito. And I think that that the fit against Peru, now that we have the points that we have, we can say it was good because it was an inflection point. It says, hey, we're playing very good, but we're not this um, machine that can outscore anybody. We need to improve defensively. And, and that's when the team changed. Because if you see that the, the previous game, Ecuador was winning, but they were conceding a lot of goals. Um, and after that Peru defeat, Ecuador start defending very well. Like if, if you take the last semester of 2021, defensively, Ecuador is one of the best teams of the qualifier. Yeah, we stopped scoring all those goals, but we we, we got results away from home that is what uh, have us now in, in this uh, position that's virtually qualified. I agree. I agree. Uh, they look a lot more balanced, right? Like you said, they lost a little bit in goals, but they've also gained a lot in defense, which is, yeah. which, is, which is what you need at the end of the day, a balanced team to be able to um, you know, get get to the World Cup and then in the World Cup, hopefully, you know, uh, have a good showing. Is there a game for you that that should have been or could have been a loss or or vice versa? Could have been or should have been a win? Um, no, but I think that there are games that were win by close margins. And, and, and I always said that the goals a team score should come by their playing philosophy, but what they do in the pitch. That's where the main core of the goals of the teams should come. And then you have set pieces, uh, opposition mistakes, and other factors that can get you to score games. And uh, Ecuador, the performance for Ecuador at home hasn't been great on the on the last part of the qualifiers and, and that's open and another debate if playing in the altitude is still an advantage or is really a disadvantage because the players don't does not play in Ecuador anymore so if you go to the last um, result in in in, uh, in Quito um, we beat Paraguay with a set piece in the 88th minute uh, we beat Venezuela with a set piece um, I score by our center backs and we draw against Brazil again by a goal score from our center backs at, at a set piece. So you see, okay, we managed to, 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 to get through, we managed to score, we managed to win, but it was like a, it was a set piece. So you got to take the points, but you got to think is there is something we're not doing right on, on our performance on the pitch that is not letting us, generate as much of chances as we should do. Then you get the other side of the coin. What Ecuador did in, in Chile was amazing. The draw in Colombia was great. And, and uh, the draw against Peru, like they, 
I think that the biggest team they draw, the, the, the biggest result away was Peru because it, it, it was the best mom, uh, the best uh, moment of uh, Peru during the qualifiers when Ecuador draw. You cannot take value away of winning in Chile, but we know Chile was struggling. And you cannot take value away of drawing against Colombia away. Uh, but yeah, Ecuador is in those five games where Colombia ha hasn't scored. But Peru was in a great shape. And, and, and if Ecuador does not draw that game, well, we will be talking today of three teams fighting by a close margin for those la last two direct spots of the World Cup. For you, has there been uh, a player that stood out throughout this whole campaign? I think Carlos Gresso is the best player Ecuador has on the pitch. Um, Ex-MLS player from Dallas, now playing in Augsburg. He is the thermometer of Ecuador. He is a, a, a tremendously talented midfielder, but it's also... Um, he is the one who, who who gets the team to be to be balanced and and uh, one of the and, and telling you that he is the best. There is also a big challenge for for um, Alfaro because of COVID, because of injuries, because of the rule of two yellow cards. Ecuador had missed a lot of players during the qualifier, uh, and that also talks very highly uh, about the coach. This is a coach that had that that has been forced to change players constantly and the team has had that the that performance anyway yeah uh i would agree with that he's been he's been a standout player for sure now the next two matches that paraguay have this this coming week they have uh paraguay in, in mm -hmm. paraguay in argentina and ecuador yeah. right Ecuador sits third place with 25 points. They, they really only need, I mean, honestly, probably a draw out of those two matches. Which one, uh, how do you see these two matches going? And, and you know, um, yeah, how do you see these two matches going? I think everybody's expecting Ecuador to get uh, the, to play against Argentina with a, with a ticket on, on the pocket. Um, because uh, is uh, First, you need Chile not to win, which nobody had win in the history of the qualifiers in Brazil. So that would be like a big surprise for everybody, not just for Ecuador, if that does not happen. Um, and then you you need uh, Peru not to win because uh, if Peru wins, everything is open for the for the last round. Ecuador still has the advantage on goal average, like. The, the in a worst case scenario, uh, Uruguay and Peru can uh, level Ecuador in points, but never in, in goals in, in, in goal average. Ecuador has plus 10, and the other ones have like I don't know, plus three, I think is the best one. Of I think it's Uruguay who has plus three. So Ecuador is playing these games mentally qualified, um, and that in a part is positive because you're playing without pressure uh, and, and and we know how much Paraguay had struggled on the qualifiers but at the same time uh, no pressure can be reflected on relaxation so it's very hard for me to predict the game because we can I think it's a kind of game where we have to prioritize context and mindset of how these teams are going to be playing because of the context, and that can be reflected on, on, on tactics. Ecuador is a better team than Paraguay, but are they going to be relaxed? Or is Paraguay going to be relaxed because they are out and they don't have the pressure to perform that they had in the previous game? So uh, it, it's, a, it's, a beer, it's a very weird scenario. And the other thing is that uh, what happened if Ecuador is outscored, Peru gets a win, you got to you are, you gotta change the the the, the chip. Uh, it's easy said, not done for the last games, and, and hope for Peru and Uruguay not to send you to the playoff. Equal mathematically is in the playoff, but <laughs> you don't you want know. that. Yeah, yeah. You you played the playoff last time, and <laughs> it was not that easy as as people said. 
no and, and and especially now with it's only it's only one game you it, it, it's a lot more i feel like it's and it's in a neutral venue so yeah for sure no and, and there are teams that, that are coming with a rhythm what happened uh, the, the advantage that peru had and that everybody had when they were facing uh the the oceanian teams is that uh, those teams finish their qualifier like a year before the playoff now they're playing now so they're gonna get in full rhythm in full competition rhythm even they can be weaker or whatever you think about them they're in competition rhythm and you can never never um undervalue a team that is in competition rhythm i totally agree with that um you know what thank you hyman so much for your time Uh, it's been a pleasure to talk about Ecuador. You've really enlightened us with some with some facts there. Um, I want to leave the 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 floor open to you for any last comments, and if you can let people know where they can find you. <laughs> the the last comments is uh, what I've been saying in 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 all the 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 spaces I've been uh, talking about qualifiers in the last week is, ah oh, man, Friday morning is going to be a absolutely different scenario, and and. Uh, You know what? There are logical results that we can put on the table and that everybody and we all can agree that that's the logical thing to happen in South America, in Europe, uh, and uh, in Central America. But the possibility of all those logical scenarios to happen is very little. And, and we're going to be here talking about one of the big CONCACAF teams, uh, probably in trouble we're gonna be here talking about one of the teams that play the, the russia 2018 world cup in south america in trouble we are going to be talking about a top star probably not making to the world cup uh, like look what's happening in africa sanean malade uh, sanean and and uh sanean and, and salah they are going to be eliminating themselves like one of those two players is not going to be in the world cup so because they play a match between them so <laughs> <laughs> Friday morning is going to be a different scenario. It's crazy, and that, and that's what and that's that's I think what makes this the beautiful game. Absolutely, absolutely, and and there's nothing more pure than international soccer. We love the leagues, we love the teams, and that's the 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 package of soccer nowadays. But as pure as a national team, like there there is nothing like you, you saw the the. Uh, the players uh, traveling cross world to to make it to the World Cup to their for the teams or for their for the country and and more and a lot of them for their father's countries like they are representing countries where they were not born but it's a, where their family come from so is if that does not get you emotional well you like soccer and with that said I mean that's a great way to to end this because I think that's 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 what keeps all of us passionate about this our countries our father's countries our mother's countries just seeing them play you know what so thank you so much thank you guys all for watching we had to cover one more of the Comebol nations make sure to check out the other nine that are coming out um so thank you please comment like and subscribe